Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team video where today I'm going over my Galapox tournament report covering how I played with Galapox over a tournament about two weeks ago. But before we get into things, please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of today's video. Did you like it or not? And remember, I've got a Discord you can check out for free in the episode description below, an affiliate link at Element Games, and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. But yeah, today, it's been a while, but I'm going over a tournament. So I'm trying to cover every tournament I play at this year because I've done it. I used to do it the first year, Kill Team, and then last year, I kind of had it gotten away a lot. But this year, I'm... I've covered pretty much every tournament I've played at so far. The only one I didn't cover was a tournament in London because that was just the week before the balanced data slate, which changed everything. So it's kind of pointless to talk over in a way because everything was invalid. So yeah, it was weird. But this tournament I played at two weeks ago was using the new balanced data slate changes. They'd been out for like over two weeks and I was playing at Partisan Games. So this is in Andover in the UK, which... I didn't realize I thought it was in Europe for some reason, but no, 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 it's in the UK. So this is like a new store I've been to because now I don't have to rely on trains to get everywhere. I can now explore more of the UK scene. And this is more in like central south U UK, England, if that makes sense. It's kind of a bit west from London, like 60 miles west. So it was really cool. Uh, and so it was an interesting uh, event because I decided to play Galapox. So I've been actually wanting to play Galapox for a while, and based on the last balanced data slate changes, even though I wanted to stay with Lucidy and Star Striders, I didn't really think they... The issue is they're good, but they can't beat the S-tier teams, specifically Felgor Ravager, and I think Galapox give me that route. And they're pretty good into most of the field, but they are hard to play as a fairly toned-down melee-only team. They have some shooting, but it's not much. And I've played them before, but never an event. So I did a lot of research and I did one practice game. So I kind of went fresh into this event. So it's a four round event. It had, I think, nearly 30 players and all kill zones were in use. Scarily, there were only two beta decima kill zones. My feelings on beta decima, I'll cover in a future video, but effectively most tournaments aren't running beta decima now. And that's only a good thing. So it's just quite, not worrying, but it's an interesting scenario that some UK events are using Beta Decima because it's not really used in America. It's not really used, at, I'm not using it at my events. None of my events will use Beta Decima until it's changed. And yeah, large po portions of the community just aren't using Beta Decima because it isn't fit for competitive play. But overall, it was really fun. Like this tables, like the they had, they were using asymmetrical into the dark layouts by Dakota from Squad Games at Luster's Workshops. So that was really cool. And everyone was like really fun. But I'll quickly get into the four games I played. So for game one, it was on secure. And I was actually paired into Felgor Ravager. So it was corner deployments. So I was quite terrified terrified of a turning point one pox bomb because my team is quite vulnerable to stun grenades and specifically the pox bomb so i used my drawn to the hum and one recon dash to get a lot of my team up the up forward onto the fields because this is like one of the worst layouts i could have played specifically this is actually one of the worst layouts in general because you have four objectives in the middle it's similar to the four objectives in the middle for Into the Dark, which is why a lot of tournaments don't run that map. And this map is just as bad. So it was kind of weird because I kind of knew I could get maximum free objectives. And this, the good thing is I was playing into an opponent who was melee as well. So what I focused on was I got the two center objectives and my own objectives, while my opponent could only get his objective and was just short of reaching the corner objectives. Like you could get operatives onto them, but not control them to cap them. So then effectively, I got very lucky at the end of turning point one where the pops, pox bomb, through his pox bomb, hitting uh, my flesh screamer and one of my mute, uh, one of my glitchlings and rolled a one for both. So I was super lucky there. He then uh, won the initiative, pox bomb them again, and this time stunned them both. But the issue is by that time, I had uh, my Lumberghast and my Tentacle Monster on the center right objectives, and then my leader behind the oil tower, and then I had two Hulks on the left hand, uh, and then like everything else on the left with Glitchlings running around. And effectively, 
the Lumbergast was like the MVP because he does D3 mortal wounds to everyone he charges. So it's like uh, I was using him to double fight. So he frenzied two operatives at the start of turning point one. Then another one died fighting him and then he charged into three of them doing three mortal wounds and then fought again. So he was like completely my MVP. And then once I pushed that far up, I basically managed to secure four objectives and just was using my double fights or forcing key goats to frenzy. I managed to get the null skull early. I got the leader turning point two. Like I just pushed up a lot. I didn't play, uh, I did play Seek and Destroy, sorry. So I went Route, Eliminate Guards, and uh, my faction Tac Op 1, which uh, Rampant Nightmares, which as per the Warhammer World, no, not the Warhammer World, the World Championships of Warhammer Rolling, damage overspill stacks like the Star Strider one. So it's effectively was just auto max. So I got very lucky there, especially with the map. But it was super fun, and I managed to win that, I think it was like... 27 or something unfortunately the fell girl couldn't get many tack ops against me just because i was killing goats too quickly and the only stuff he could reliably charge were the nightmare hulks i think well one thing i did turning point two was just i think i threw like three frag grenades at the sorcerer and the null scar just to kill him via frag grenades like the null scar died to crit frag grenades after being frenzied so it was just kind of like my frag grenades were super efficient but positive run for my first round then on round two i was playing loot into exaction squad on morok so the first one was octarius this was morok this map was kind of worrying for me there was lots of heavy but exaction have lots of way to strip my cover you know they have their ploy just ignore my cover and shoot everyone so i was expecting that but he went four shields so he marked my leader for his uh, seizure incapacitate and basically all I used my leader to, so I'd given my leader brutal and balanced. So basically, because in my last matchup, he had lethal five up and plus one damage. But in this matchup, he was just running around capturing points and effectively turning point one, I managed to get four objectives. I won the defender role and picked this side because as you can see with the tower, like the communications tower, it allows me to more safely move up and capture and hide that. And I did a, once again, a very powerful turning point one drawn to the hum, just to get enough glitch leans into position because he gave me initiative. So I looted my, um, the comms tower and the objective by the landing pad. And effectively I went four, three, three, three on the primaries and kind of pushed him back. His dog kind of died killing my Screamer, but my Screamer was in position to just deny the points. And I think it's just because of my experience in Tafel, in not in Tafel, goal, sorry, into Exaction Squad, because I know that the main weakness of Exaction Squad is Brutal. So my leader had Brutal, the Lumbergast has Brutal, and one of the mutants with the axe has Brutal. So I kind of actually just use them to bully the shields, so the shields weren't too much of a problem. And yeah, it, it was tough, but because I know how Exaction works after playing them for so long, it wasn't too rough. And this was kind of a bad board for Exaction as well, because even though there's lots of heavy cover in the way, it's actually quite easy for me to charge and threaten his objectives. So I started blocking his objectives from being able to loot just because I was throwing stuff at that they couldn't contest. So it was a scary matchup on paper. But once I got into their faces and it was just kind of killing them, like especially the key thing into this matchup is you don't really charge the shields unless you have brutal. You charge the other stuff because you want the shields to charge and fight you. You don't want to charge and fight the shields. So it was kind of really efficient there. And yeah, it was just unfortunate. But I managed to go quite far up and just secure the primacies and max my tack ops. Because once again, I went this time, I think I just went with route, eliminate guard and Robin Ransack and basically maxed all that because I just kept pushing up. Then on round three, we were playing Capture and I was playing into Hunter Clade. So this is uh, buffed Hunter Clade into nerfed Galapox-ish. But the funny thing is, even when Hunter Clade was at their most powerful, they couldn't beat Galapox, who were also, at, to be fair, the most powerful. And the problem uh, my opponent had was I immediately in the equipment phase, I spent a, spent one CP to pollute his optimized gate because he took four Rust Stalkers. So all of a sudden, only one of his Rust Stalkers could move through terrain for free, which massively hampered his game plan. 
he had gone recover item and then I had gone with route Robin ransack and rampant nightmares and effectively turning point one as you can see I did another drawn to the hum on the right hand side moved up there and I'd taken a change order just to threaten because before I'd just been taking recon dashes I used my glitch leans to capture the objectives because they'd super conceal and I got three objectives turning point one then I won initiative turning point two my lumber ghast moved up and killed his rust stalker on the right with his leader and basically secured that flank and then my flesh cleaver and tentacle monster killed another three uh, no, no, another two, sorry, uh, assassins. Well, they killed all the Rust Stalkers, which basically allowed me to max my faction tack up turning point two. And then, yeah, I just kind of went 4 2, 4 2, and then 4 2 on the primary again, because capture is very easy for this kill team. The smoke stacks were super helpful because they blocked visibility, and I was just kind of able to push up for free. There was not much my opponent really could have done, especially on capture. Because if he tried to threaten my own objectives, I had hulks nearby as well as the mutants. So he was in a rough spot. And effectively, yeah, I, I, I discussed it on reflection. And I was telling my opponent he probably should have just taken five infiltrators with the relentless guns. Because the problem was he just fighting me was a trap. Because he can't have been injured. And then like my hulks just wanted to be in combat. So I think it probably would have been harder if we were on loot. But on capture... I don't think Gelapox fear much, especially onto this kind of board. And then for the final round, I was playing into Commandos on Secure again. So this time for my leader, I had taken Lethal 5 up and Rending. So every time my leader proc a crit, he would basically go to 2 and 3 crits. I drew onto the hum into the center to get my Lumbergast and more guys up to the terrain so they were fully safe from his uh, sniper boy, which you can see sneak again right into my drop zone on Chownath, which was fun, right? So he actually managed to get some key shots. He killed a glitch lean, but not enough to splash into others. So effectively, turning point one, it was just me getting into position. I managed to get three objectives. So I had my closest three because I had to invest uh, just to get there safely. And because uh, once again, I'd also taken a change order just to basically stay safe but also threaten the sniper boy up there and then uh he won initiative managed to steal my point going two uh, four two to him on the primary but where no i won initiative sorry and i charged my lumber ghast and just killed his rocket killed his rocket boy immediately so i eliminated one of his shooting threats my leader who was up in the top left corner survived a harpoon because of uh, my my opponent threw a harpoon at me but because he had to get within Two inches of me, he was minus one attack dice by the Galapox infected ability. So I only got one hit, which I saved. And then I charged up, killed his sniper boy, and then pushed up the board. I did lose eventually the Lumbergast, but he eventually he had to invest so much to kill him. And then he charged into my tentacle monster and didn't do much because my tentacle monster quickly charged the comms and killed the comms. And then I won initiative again, turning point three. My leader charged into his knob. And because you're statistically likely to roll two crits, so I rolled two crits, turning into three. He rolled no crits. And effectively, my leader made a lot of fill no pain saves and did 15 damage, which you couldn't just to scratch around and killed him. And the key thing, it was actually super close. But I realized, because I managed to go free free on turning point three, but to win, I needed to take his backfield because I'd maxed my tack ops again because I'd taken ramp and nightmares, Robin ransack and route. So what I did, end of turning point three, I'd moved and dashed a grot, uh, my glitch lean near his uh, closest top objective, and then I won initiative, spent a C, uh, well spent my two CP to draw to the hum just the glitch lean. So he was basically on the left hand side, and I dashed him forward so he was touching the objective where the barricade is and then moved and capped the point. Uh, and then unfortunately, my opponent had no way to steal that back. And because he only had three boys left, he and I was protecting all my barricades. He couldn't get uh, secure barricades. He couldn't steal the point back. So I managed to max my attack ops, go 4-2 in the final round to balance around going 4-2, turning point two. And because I had more attack ops, I won by two points. But it was super close. Like I got very lucky at times where the bomb squig charged into... 
a glitchling and a mutant but because he's minus one dice on the first mutant he only got one hit which i saved and then he exploded the glitchling but because he only killed one of them that mutant was able then turning point to able to move up to the barricade via a charge and steal that point for me so it was just like lots of key things i did lose like uh, a bug and a glitchling turning point one and he, he effectively killed all my glitchlings bar one by the end of turning point two so he was doing a good job of that but the issue is my hoax had then gotten too close and um, with the change to just a scratch because i was rolling key crits it was just like nothing he could do really and he had also spent a lot of cp turning point one doing daka 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 and then spending most of it on turning point two with daka 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 i think it was wa and then uh, shush to move up so i just got very lucky at key points and but the key thing was winning initiative but i did love how this game played out because at one point i thought i was definitely losing until i saw that play and i just love how the galapox allows you to reward yourself for positional play because of their mobility tricks and i effectively had to always save two cp in the bank so i knew i had that drawn to the hum just in case and luckily it just paid off for me turning point three well going into turning point four so at the end of the tournament i managed to come first as the only player on four wins my friend Mikhail, he came second with three wins and a draw using his Star Striders. So we were kind of like mirroring the meta of almost two years ago, which was which was fun. And then uh, Ryan uh, from Turning Point Tactics came third with Phobos. It was a super fun event. Like overall, I had so much fun. I was really happy with my performance because I'd only managed to get one practice game in and I'd been doing a lot of theory prep because I don't have much time to play at the moment. So I'd been chatting to one of my friends who had helped me a lot with Galapox tactics and tricks. And yeah, it was just a lot of research because I've played the kill team a lot in practice like almost a year ago, but I haven't played them properly since. So I was really happy with that, how my performance was. I played against a lot of tough players in a very stacked tournament, oddly, because most of the London players came up, like a lot of the UK top players were there. It sold out. It was really good i think it was their second event which was great the event itself was won really nicely two hour rounds which i love right two hour rounds is so much better than an hour and 45 there were round timings called out the maps were all clearly laid out which was great the objectives were all pre-laid out as well which was really useful the store was great i really love partisan games because what <laughs> it seems silly right but at, when I'm at these events, usually I'm buying like snacks and refreshments there, partly because I, I have poor planning, but also because it's kind of like you don't really want mid round. You don't want like in a in between rounds, you don't really want to run to the store to get like drinks and stuff. So they just kept a tab. And I know it seems simple just keeping a tab, but it allowed me to go like, oh, yeah, just I could just pay it all at the end, which I found really convenient. And yeah, it was just a like a really nice store. There were two layers like ground floor and first floor and it was just great like and i was very very ha happy and totally aware that because i didn't play on beta decima i was in a good chance of winning because beta decima is just like a mess like one of my other planes, friends had to play uh, his felgor on beta decima I managed to draw into star striders and i was like yeah yeah it's just like, it was on loot as well and i was like yeah i know your pain so, but it was a really cool store. They had a lot, like the community was great. They had tons of prizes. They did best painted, most sporting, top three. I got like a 30 pound voucher. Second place got like 20 and third place got 10. So I used it to buy some hobby supplies and some Chaos Space Marine Possessed, which I plan to use for a future project. And it was just a cool event. It is a bit difficult to get to because you kind of have to drive there or take a taxi, but the TO is really cool there and they will help like and the locals will just help pick you up if you want to go because I believe their next event is the 10th of August which is the same time as the Warhammer World one but it, it's a really nice venue like everyone's really cool they also do like a food ordering service with a local cafe if you wanted to order food there for lunch although that is the other downside the nearest food supplies like shops for food and stuff are five minute drive away not a five minute walk so I was in advance, I just brought a sandwich and some snacks and then I just used the snacks 
at the store to kind of keep me going, which worked out in the end. So that's the only real criticism. Otherwise, it was really great, a really fun event. And I'd recommend you go in there next time if you're in the area or wanting to play in the UK scene. It's a really fun event. It was won really well. The players were great. Everyone was nice and friendly. Everyone had a good time, you know, especially me not playing on Bayer Decima. Uh, although I wish tournaments in general would just stop using Bayer Decima until it gets properly fixed. But I'll cover that in a future video. Don't worry. And it's not just because I'm playing a melee team. Even if I was playing any other team, like playing Pathfinders, that is just... It's not a game if you're against Pathfinders on Bayer Decima. But yeah, it was really cool. And I just loved... I would have liked to play on uh, Into the Dark. But if not playing on Into the Dark at the cost of not playing on Beta Decima, I will happily take that every day, you know. Uh, but it's really fun. And I was happy with how the Galapox played out. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have won my Commando matchup if it was in the prior balance data slate. Because the cool thing about Galapox at the moment, you can kind of tech into matchups that were bad. As I said... Into commandos, I give the leader lethal five up and rending. So if your leader charges into two commandos and double fights, statistically he will kill two commandos immediately, taking maybe two hits back, you know, one to two hits back. And then with your, you know, DPR rolls, you're saving like maybe five, four, four damage, four free damage. So it's not a bad trade. And then you can just keep charging out. And because your hulks do so much damage, if they roll hot with crits, they can kind of just mess up hulks. I mean, not hulks, commandos. And the Felgor matchup hasn't really changed. They just take less, uh, what do you call them? Less war paint, which kind of helps. You know, it makes your flies a little bit more useful, but it was mainly the the coats is also easier, but I didn't play into coats. But the commando matchup definitely now is very, very winnable for this kill team. And yeah, it's just fun. I'm really liking how the Gelapox plays. They are tough. But I think they're really fun because I enjoy positional teams and they're a very positional heavy team. But yeah, if if you like... But yeah, that's pretty much it from me today. I'll be back with other videos soon. But remember, please, to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. Do you like my tournament reports? You know, let me know. And what do you think of the event and if you were there? And remember, I've got a Discord you can check out for free in the episode description below, an affiliate link at Element Games, and a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. And I'll quickly shout out my Patrons. So for my adepts of the crit, I have Tom, Super Cow, Sam, Nick, Kenzie, John Thomas, Graham, Freeman, David, Dave Meets World, Dad of Goldens, Ben, and for my veterans of the crit, I have Sam Just. I thank you so much for all your support. It really means a lot to me and helps support the channel. But yeah, I'll have another Kill Team video on Thursday, which might be quite statistical in nature. And then I'll have a very dark Saturday, Saturday mystery special. I took a week off unintentionally because I played at a Legion's Imperialis tournament over the weekend, where I managed to come four wins, one loss, and fourth out of 30 players after playing my first five games that weekend. So that was fun. I'm never playing skirmish games again. I mean, I'm never, I am not going away from skirmish games. Big format Warhammer games are not for me. They, they take too much time. And because I haven't played one for like five or six years, so I'm definitely sticking back to Kill Team. But remember, no matter what happens, no matter where you travel to a tournament, you always have a chance to win as long as you can roll a crit.